Okay, so I'm just going to go right into it. One take, no editing, no redos, no do-overs. I'm just going to tell you about this dream I had this morning. Okay, so um, it started off with, I, I don't know the, really the story behind it, but I know it was near Halloween, and apparently I was uh, about to become homeless, and I was going to travel the country being homeless, and uh, my mother warned me that being a teenage girl, my best defense was to learn um, how to dig a hole very quickly at the end of the night, so that when you have to, uh, when you have to find a safe place to sleep, you just bury yourself. Because that makes sense, you know, especially as a teen girl, I, I knew that. Um, so I started practicing that, and at one point, um, I was getting really good at it. And at one point, I was trying to bury myself somewhere, and then some dude had, like, a, a, a tent on a trampoline, and he decided to set it up over my, my safety grave or whatever it was. And uh, my, my attempts of throwing sock puppet monkeys at him was not persuading him to leave. So I got really mad and I left and uh, my buddies were all like, uh, so I decided um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go relax by going to historical downtown Cranford, New Jersey. Uh, this was the, the Cranford of 1995. So this was around the same time the town clock, which never worked well, was there, but the massive multi-use structure that was a CVS and a parking deck wasn't there yet. So it was still kind of idyllic. Uh, so I showed up there and of course it's like a reason all restaurants with all those patio seatings and it's near the holidays. So everyone's partying and it's all like white people partying. So, you know, they're all dressed in sombreros and doing shots of tequila and dumb shit like that. Um, and ran into a few of my buddies from, uh, high school and uh, stuff happened and then they're like well we know you know you're kind of stressing out so let's get you some drinks I was like all right cool whatever and get you some drinks and then the cops started coming around and I guess this was some sort of repressed memory from cops uh, us and what we did in high school and having cops come around and stuff like that yeah uh, luckily enough we were pretty chill and we could always get away with whatever we we're doing because we had some sort of communal spidey sense where we knew that um all right let's grab all the uh Zimas and get the hell out of this hotel because the cops are going to be here any second. And I'd say nine out of ten times, like we were always right. And uh, so the cops are snooping around, and this one dude's like, "All right, so uh, here, this will help you relax." And he hands me like, an edible, and the edible was one of those uh, little Japanese snack cakes where it's like a gelatin, like a ball of gelatin with a, a yellow yolk in it, so it looked like a candied raw egg. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you did better. And, of course, my lizard brain while I'm sleeping is like, don't eat the whole thing. So I take, like, a, a bite out of it, and it breaks, and it gets all over the place. And I got this goo or whatnot, and the cops see me, and I'm like, oh, we got to we gotta go. And they're like, yeah, you got to go, especially with your spiky leather jacket. Because apparently, even though I'm a teen girl who's going to be homeless in a few days, I still have my spiky jacket. And um, so they're like, come on, we got to go. And we, we try to leave, and we're, we walk down some suburban street with a bunch of homes it's it, like stuff's starting to get weird now right is it yet or is it just like a normal tuesday okay so it, it hit weird um so we're walking down the street with me and my buddies and uh the cops are like following us and we're like dude we got to get out of here you got to ditch the jacket we got to get rid of you like they're always talking we have to get rid of you because you're the one who's going to get in trouble because you're about to travel the country and be homeless and um so they uh they take my jacket, and then the cops show up, and they're like, um, we're going to pull you over for suspicion of, of drunk driving, and we weren't even driving yet. We didn't get to, into our cars. So the cops are all like, well, you better get into your cars and follow us then. So we get into our cars. We drive like a few blocks down the street and pull up into this mini mall thing where there was a, uh, a Hasidic Jew restaurant running late at night. And the cops are like, all right, well, you wait out here and we're going to give you your sobriety tests. And then they went inside with some of the dudes and they weren't coming out. And we're all kind of standing there like, uh, I don't think this is like, we, we, it was obviously with some sort of shady whatever going on. So like, then, then I guess a, a, some guy came out of the building 
this relates. Like, there's a reason why I'm telling you some of these details. So this like dude comes out and he looks like uh um who's that uh that cross-eyed child toucher from Bam Majera's show? It was like Don Corleone or Don Vito or something. So he comes out, you know, and he's dressed like a three percenter, which makes no sense to me because Muslims and Sidham don't usually run businesses together. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, let me show you this trick. And he pisses himself. I guess he was trying to distract us from leaving or something like that. I'm like, this isn't any good. And then um, we're like, dude, you're bizarre. You need to get the hell out of here. And then next thing you know, like, I'm freaking out. So I start pulling out cigarettes to smoke them. And, like, it was one of those, like, bags of holding cigarette packs where you pull out a few and, like, your friends take a few and you just keep going and keep going. Like, it would never run out of cigarettes. And I'm trying to smoke them, and as I'm smoking them, they're, like, turning into these weird, like, sage bush things. And then all the bushes in front of the, um, the, the business turn into the same sort of bush. And then the dude comes back out, the guy who pissed himself, and he's all like, what are you doing setting fire to blah, blah, blah? I'm like, no, I'm just smoking my whatever these things are now, like broom handles. And um, so he gets mad at me, I get mad at him, and we're, like, yelling at each other, whatever. He goes back inside, and then it's like... My, my buddy uh, Bob turns to me and he's all like, okay, so we need to get out of here. Here's my plan. It's almost Halloween, so we're going to dress up like we're homeless people. And he grabs a bunch of shopping carts and he starts filling them full of inflatable toys and cardboard boxes. And we start getting them all together and we're, we're just about to leave and we're still waiting for the cops to show up. And then this like little Chevy Nova hashback pull from the 70s, like, bright blue pulls up into the parking lot and this dude jumps out with like a walter ppk pistol or something like that obviously like the sort of pistol dude who drives the station wagon would be carrying it and he's all like how dare you make fun of my uncle he served in the vietnam war and he starts shooting at us and, and like blasting away at every single one of us and then i i, I look down the road and i see that there's a, a movie theater Oh, if we could just get to the movie theater, we'll be safe. And so we book in different directions. We're running, and my, my friends are getting shot and dead. And, like, I make it. My buddy Bob makes it. I think my buddy Tommy dies in my arm with some sort of funny punchline at the end of it. I don't I don't even remember. But then we finally get to the, um, the uh, movie theater. And we get there. And as soon as we get there, we're like, yeah, we make it. And... Instantly, it breaks out into a song and dance routine from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, where all me, all of my friends, random audience members, and pedestrians in the street do a full-on uh, sharks versus jets routine, but it's the time warp. And everyone is shocked and freaked out because I happen to know what I was doing. I was like the lead singer and choreographer for the whole thing and yeah so i should probably like not eat pizza right before i go to bed like that's that's my story i, I figured i'd just record it and put it out there because it's so bizarre there was so much detail in it like i don't want to have to repeat it over and over and over again it's it's crazy the way the uh the mind works in when you're dreaming that you can fill in so many details like that because like I, I did have people in the dream. I guess the story is boring now because we're going to talk about it. But like all the details in the dream, a lot of it is based off of my memories, like my friends and, and the town and stuff like that. But also there was like I didn't recognize anyone in the dance troupe. Like so my brain just made up fake faces and fake personalities and, and whatnot to fill out every detail on this. Yeah, so that's my story. It sounded a lot funnier. Oh, I absolutely can. Every single time. Yeah, I can. Prove me wrong. <laughs> I can. I can tell you exactly who I saw. I can also read in my dreams, too, and apparently that's not a thing either. But, oh. All I know is, uh, yeah, don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. <laughs>